Have you ever felt? Are you listening? Damn. Okay, we're tying a carp fly, and uh, this is kind of a variation of John Mo John Montana's hybrid worm. Um, if you haven't fished that fly, it's probably one of the most effective flies on the planet. And this is kind of the the version that I like to fish. But I've been adding a little bit of a a variation to it that makes it just killer. Um, as you can see, I don't have a hook in the vise right now. I've got one of these body pins and I've got it clamped in way up here just because I wanted a little more rigid and I'm, I'm not going to use much of it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to tie a little tiny bit of marabou onto this piece of chenille. So I've got UTC 70 denier thread and I'll just dress that. I'll take a piece of this ultra chenille and just tie it right on top. So once that's tied in, I'll kind of trim it and then I'll come in here with the cautery tool and singe it a bit. That kind of creates a little bit of a ball so that thread won't want to slip off of there as easily. Then I'm going to take a piece of, of marabou that's nice and full like this one that I have and uh, kind of pluck some of the marabou from the base. And so I've got this clump of marabou. I'm going to trim it all so that the, the butts are right there in my finger. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tie those right on there. It's kind of hard not to make not to build stuff up here, but we'll do it as best we can. So that's pretty much tied in. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my thumbnail and I'm going to pinch it right here and then just break it off. So it's just a little marabou puff. You can do damselfly tails the same way with, with olive. Anyway, once I, once I get there, I'm going to take a little bit of this loon cement and I'm just going to cement my knot. Some of it seeped into that chenille, that's fine. And it will want to roll around on you a little bit. And then I'm just going to throw a hand whip in there. Or you can use an extended whip finish tool. If you ever do a hand whip finish, you got to make sure that you glue that knot. Because it's not going to be quite as tight as the one with the tool. Okay. So, pull that off. Once that dries, it's going to be a super durable connection. Okay. So the hook that I have in the, the vise is a Gamakatsu SL45 saltwater hook. And uh, the reason I like this is because you're using a lot of the same techniques that you would be using actually for bonefish. So this, this hook is designed to ride hook point up and it's super, super sharp. And it's flat black. I like that too. So anyway, I'm just going to dress this hook with some UTC70 in red. And I'm going to wrap it all the way down the down the bend just a little bit. Okay, so now you don't want the tail to be too long. I, I think this is this is too long for this one. So I'll, I'll kind of measure the the length of the body. To the tip of where the the marabou starts and i'll tie it in right there so if you tie it down the bend a little bit you can see that when this is upside down that's that's actually going to be sticking up so you know what i forgot to tie the eyes in so let's just go back and do that really quick no big deal tie the eyes in about that close 
to the hook eye. Now you can use 140 thread for this if you want. I'm just using 70 because that's what I had at the desk. Okay, once the eyes are in, um, it's a good idea to glue them down with something. So instead of using a, a glue that's going to have a little bit of scent to it, I'm just going to put some of this water-based loon cement in it. And uh, with carp, you want to reduce your scent footprint, if you will. If you understand that terminology, basically make it not smell like human being or chemical as much as possible. So anyway, uh, got it glued down a little bit. And uh, what I'm going to do now is just kind of lay that yarn or the, the chenille over the rest of the body and tie it down. The reason I didn't trim it off in the back is just because I want it to look nice and there will be a big bump back there if I do that. Okay, for the body of this fly, it's super simple. I'm just taking tan antron, tying it in right here, going back to where the tail starts, and coming back forward. And then I'm just going to wrap a body out of that. Okay, now for the soft hackle. Okay, for the soft hackle on this one, I'm just going to use a Coq de Leon hen saddle. This one's actually speckled brown, but speckled ginger or speckled copper olive, all those colors work really well. So I'm going to clean out the fluff, and then I can take these really fine point tweezers and just grab the tip of the feather and pull it down so that I can find that tie-in point. It's a little bit easier to do it that way than with fat fingers like I got. So once I have that tied in, I'll just wrap that forward to my thread. I'm trying to keep them swept back as I do it. It's a little bit easier said than done. Then I'm just going to come under here and tease back any of those fibers that decided to get out of or to go forward. All right, that's pretty much it. So all you do now is just vent your thread forward and whip finish it. Now, an important thing about carp flies is, you know, this is done with large barbell eyes. You can change it to small or medium. But you might even change it to, uh, you know, lead eyes or something, just kind of depending on what depth you want to fish. This one's designed for about two to four feet. If you're fishing for in deeper than that, I would recommend going with a little bit heavier eye. But that's the beauty of it. You can put just about any eye you want on this, depending on your conditions. Anyway, there you have it. Carp hybrid variation. Thanks, John Montana, for an awesome pattern. All this stuff can be found at store.flyfishfood.com. Once we're tied in, I'm just gonna take my hackle and wrap. Screw you, Brahma. Damn.